heartbeat accelerates, all thoughts are focused on this individual. This is genuinely an adrenaline surge. So our body senses the predator, senses the danger and reacts accordingly. No one wants to be dull. A lot of times a guy starts hitting a woman and she can't leave. True love is boring. He is aware that he is causing pain to someone, but he does not give a damn about the consequences. And a narcissist always possesses additional resources. He always possesses women on the side, perhaps even other families on the side. Just run, depart and never come back. Leave this place and never return again. I needed the help of my loved ones just to escape. Hey all, dear pals, I'm Olga Chebikina. Thanks a ton for checking us out, for picking us. These prices are crucial for our team. So, a nerve-wracking pleasant moment. Introducing a new expert in a highly demanded field. The topic is touchy. This is the psychology of relationships, relationships between men and women, relationships with abusers, with narcissists, various dependencies. Unfortunately, the topic is in demand and we can't avoid it. We haven't touched it so sharply yet. Meet Olga Schmel, please, a psychologist, sexologist and profiler. Hey all, what's up? Hi. Thanks a ton for agreeing to become a channel expert and being willing to share your experience. And now I suggest we start right away. The topic is tough and no beating around the bush. Let's discuss addiction, abusive relationships, narcissists, and how to recognize them. You had quite a dramatic personal life, the story that led you to psychology. Tell me, please, how, when, how quickly did you realize that something was wrong with your partner and how long did you look for a way out? Initially, everything was going well for us, beautifully. This guy was into me, attentive and persistent. He charmed all the grown women in my family. He was such a charming guy, seemed like a really dependable young man. We used to be an item. He invited me to go on a trip to the beach and unwind together. He proposed there. It was so beautiful and perfect. This is a fairy tale you're telling now that all girls dream about. Well, yes, that is precisely how it appeared. I pondered it for a week, conversed with my mother, conversed with my sister, and everyone was like, yeah, what a good guy. So I introduced to my family and he introduced me to his family, his mom, his friends. He even took me to work. So he was like, I want a family. I want to get married. I want kids. I don't have any kids. He said that I'm really worried. I'm ambitious, making good money, can support a family and afford to have children. Decided to marry, liked him too, filed application, already started living together. I had this like, you know, intuitive feeling, but I couldn't explain why it was happening. I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Everything's fine. But intuitively, I just feel like running for some reason. Even if you told someone, they wouldn't grasp. I said I was sharing with my sister, talking to her husband. I probably changed my mind. I am not going to marry him. She got the response that, Olga, you're searching for a prince. There are no princes. A nice guy. He was like, let's have a baby. The mistake was that I just rushed. Since pregnancy, huh? Yeah, I somehow got pregnant fast and easily. Got married, lived together. He worked. I stayed home taking care of my pregnancy. Minding my own business. About five months later, after I had changed, I started finding empty beer bottles. Five liter big bottles like that. I can tell something's off with that person. Then I start asking what's going on. So I hear that I am having some business problems at the moment. Do not worry. Everything will work out. Well, I'm pregnant and of course I'm freaking out. All right, let me break it down for you. Because he was constantly drinking, his vigilance decreased, and he still... He told me what's really going on. This just shocked me. Turns out he doesn't know how to make money at all. Originally, he lives from one credit to another. Many years have been living on this money, and he's fooling everyone. And my mother and friends. So he rents a table from them in the office. He's just pretending to work and make money. Basically, he takes loans, invested in his mother's apartment, and now confessed, probably because his mind couldn't handle it. And such responsibility from a child. I'm telling my mom, turns out he's a hardcore alcoholic who got sobered up. Mother says, okay, let's try something now. Let's invite his psychologist who encoded him. Let him encode him again, have a conversation with him. And I already started to wonder, is everything okay with this person's mental health? Because I'm expecting a baby and it's important for me to understand. So I just took him aside and asked, what's going on? Is he mentally ill? The doctor gently told me that he's not sick. I don't see any diagnosis here, but there's no need to talk about health either. 
He stated that there is a state between individuals who are mentally healthy and those who are sick, which includes borderline conditions. This ex-husband of mine, he was just like totally awful. I mean, it was like hell, you know. I needed the help of my loved ones just to escape. It was really unclear how I would even go on living, but the only way out was to just run away. He said he'd hang himself, saying, I'll hang myself if you go. Then he threatened me, and that's when I realized there's something in life I don't know. There's some information that I don't have. And then I made the decision that I would go into psychology to study this question. And here I am, a psychologist for 15 years, a practicing psychologist. I learned a ton of information that I think is super important to get out to people. A common topic, and I worked on a project that dealt specifically with providing psychological assistance to victims of domestic violence, physical violence, and emotional abuse. And there are a multitude of these cases, complaints, and some things are just absolutely awful. And what was the specific factor that served as the trigger for these notable changes in his behavior? Seems like he was a straight shooter, but at some point he started hitting the bottle. You knew him when he was sober, but when he entered another phase, meaning the person changed. He initiated pushing me, and I rapidly ran away. It did not escalate into anything of a serious nature. However, the issue was that he began accusing me of being incapable of generating any stories whatsoever. Now, I understand that it's called a projection, but back then I had no clue what people could suspect me of. There were these really emotional swings that I'm going to tell you more about. There was no physical violence, but he pushed me once. I think if I had stayed any longer, he would have already resorted to physical force. Physical violence, you can see it, but emotional violence is visible and incomprehensible. And any absolute person of any status or material wealth can find themselves in this state, in this situation. No self-esteem. They often say there are victims and then there are strong, self-sufficient people. But even a person from this group can become a victim? Because everything starts off very beautifully, you know, and it just happens very smoothly. It's like cooking a frog, you know, it happens psychological concept when you put a frog in regular water, gradually heat it up, and it just doesn't have time to jump out, doesn't understand. They are currently boiling her alive, likewise for me. This is a really powerful metaphor, you know, from my experience talking to my heroines who shared stories of monkey relationships. That's exactly how it is. Everything seems like a fairy tale at first. Lots of flowers, gifts, attention, and quality time with loved ones. Everyone is certain that the woman got lucky. And then... That's why it's difficult to escape this, because everyone is pointing their finger at you. You haven't seen any decent guys, and now you found one, so what else do you need? He captivates everyone around him, but simultaneously he informs everyone that there is an issue with my significant other. And she's hiding the fact that he actually sees himself as the head of the household and doesn't want to bring this argument out of the house. And then when everything goes wrong, she seeks assistance. Everyone is puzzled and expressing disbelief. You already mentioned emotional dependency. How fast does it come together? I know that you bring up depressing stats, like almost 90% of women are in relationships and they are emotionally reliant on their partners. How, if possible, to anticipate such a situation or get out when it has already happened? Regrettably, we typically develop an incorrect understanding of love from an early age. So, like, we watch TV shows, read books, listen to songs, and there's this whole thing about love, you know, like suffering, going through stuff. It's all drama. And we believe that this is genuine love. Regarding genuine love, the type that makes you want to discard all of those books dull. Boring as hell, yeah. And since childhood, we've always thought that love, it's like, it's so dramatic. And when a woman finds these signs in... Life, it's like that. That's what love is. Yeah, that's exactly it. I always wanted, waited for, and searched for this. A man might come across this, but women more often. A woman is being prepared for family, for relationships, kids, and here she falls in love. She thinks she's falling in love. She is confusing these signs of anxiety or something. So like her heart is racing. She is all caught up in this guy. All her thoughts are about him. This is actually an adrenaline rush. And so our body feels the predator, feels the danger, and reacts. Rather than fleeing from this individual, she believes it is all love, it is destiny, and gets closer to an individual who is the opposite, essentially what is occurring in the body. 
the rush of adrenaline is balanced out by a big release of endorphins. Now I'm going to talk about the endorphin adrenaline addiction, although there are others too. But in this case, that's exactly the kind of story that happens to women. And when this endorphin is released in response to a huge adrenaline rush, a woman feels euphoria and she confuses that these emotional swings are true love. Listen, you're absolutely right. And when all of these events occur, a woman experiences this emotional reliance, which is commonly known as love and is a deep affectionate attachment. Scientists have conducted studies that demonstrate the emotional addiction to adrenaline is, in fact, remarkably similar to the addiction experienced with drugs. And getting off all this is impossible on your own. A lot of times a guy starts hitting a woman and she can't leave. All scratching heads asking how. She's just sitting there on this wave of hormones, riding it out. This is a type of hormonal dependency. This is our secret sauce. This guy is her supplier of internal drugs. And she can't get away from him anymore. How can you determine if you can merge these two positions as a specialist and as a woman in this specific case? That's some dependency on true love. So what's true love like, huh? True love is uninteresting. She is genuinely uninteresting and addicted to the hormone oxytocin. It's like a hormone of attachment, love, and care. It's like this hormone that gets produced in large amounts when a woman gives birth to a baby. And we do not even consider the fact that it is a comfortable state and that it is true love. Hey ladies, please share your thoughts on this in the comments section. It's really interesting because I think it could be sensational for someone. This information is crucial to realize right now, and that's why we have our minds and these amazing experts. There's a huge amount of information available in open sources, and it's free, high quality, and reliable, making it incredibly valuable. During the interview preparation, we had a conversation about how this dependency often doesn't just form on its own, although it can happen, but frequently men contribute to creating such a hormonal dependency in women. How does this happen, and what are the factors involved? A lot of people know how this mechanism works, like, at all. And there's even this thing called pickup. There are numerous schools that teach you how to truly rock someone on emotional swings. So how did all of this start? Like I mentioned earlier, there are individuals with mental illnesses, psychotics, and neurotics. These are practically healthy people, but they've been trained. Don't do what they want, do what you need to do, what they expect from you. And after working with a psychologist, they become more harmonious. Fixable, can it be fixed? Piece of cake. And here's a little something in the middle, kind of on the border. They used to call them psychopath. Nowadays, they call this condition a personality disorder. This is exactly what happens when a person's personality is upset. So, like, this is no longer something that can be resolved with psychology. Either psychiatrists or clinical psychologists also deal with these issues. And these are the kind of people with personality disorders. There are about 10 of them according to various classifications. Every personality disorder has its own characteristics. And there are some aggressive ones among them, very dangerous. And one of these types of disorders is specifically called narcissistic personality disorder. Highly famous and widespread, let's discuss it scientifically, as you believe in it, and it's crucial to me, specifically the scientific approach. You rely on serious research, there's lots of terminology in our episodes, and thank you for going so deep into the subject matter. The famous Narcissus flowers known to all have unique medical properties. Perspectives. How to spot narcissistic personality disorder. One of the riskiest types, as they excel at disguising their true selves. So there's this other personality disorder, like antisocial personality disorder, for example. And these are mostly people who are sitting in prisons. They can use physical violence, kill, steal, commit such crimes already. That's what they say. Social ones, they don't adhere to society's rules. And narcissists, on the contrary, cool mimic, adapt, and resemble these guys. Yeah, they are typically very fascinating and charming. And you never even imagine what type of individual is standing in front of you. He can easily deceive a psychologist. He skillfully feigns various emotions, despite not experiencing them. So it is all the same for everyone. However, they comprehend that they are different in some manner. They observe others' behavior and mimic it. In fact, there is a greater depth and complexity to this, which explains why they exhibit such behavior. She can't change him and make him different. 
this program is something else. And all the narcissists behave the same way. They have a protective mechanism of the mind, projection. So this narcissist, he has a personality disorder. This signifies that his inner child is extremely rebellious and in an unhealthy state. All of us are aware that we have an inner child, an inner critic, an inner parent, and an inner adult within ourselves. That's just ego. And he didn't develop an ego. So he has this rebellious child, you could say, unhealthy. There's a critic, sadistic, who constantly pressures him. And everyone thinks narcissists are arrogant with an inflated sense of self-worth, but they have low self-esteem. So this inner sadistic critic constantly presses this kid, you know. Narcissus always feels ashamed. He's really, 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 really struggling with himself. And in order to avoid all these internal experiences, the narcissist looks for a person. That is, he suppresses this insignificant, worthless part of himself. Psychological process is not a joke. So he kind of utilizes this individual as a component of his psyche. He simply gets rid of his own useless part, this projection, his dirty coat, by placing it onto another person without any consideration. He finds a target. Let's call it a target. Most of the time, they're a really positive, kind person, Mm -hmm. full of life. But he has boundary issues. So the narcissist starts checking if you're normal at all. How would you react if I started pushing your boundaries now? And if he observes that the woman in this instance permits him to test her limits, then all right, that is my individual. He starts to charm him. This here is called the sugar show, usually very beautiful. He studies his prey, sees what she needs. If you need flowers, then you give flowers. And he gives gifts. He says what the victim wants to hear. You want with your family, he will speak there just the way you want. And during that time, he is simply tightening the screws on his psychological and mental hoses ensuring they are securely in place. Then comes the idealization. You're the best. You're amazing. I've been waiting for you my whole life. And after a period of time, when the girl begins to believe in this fairy tale, the narcissist gradually starts to devalue her. So what did you figure out? You're not much of a boss lady. Maybe I messed up, rushed. And then out of nowhere, you get hit with this ice cold reality check some shock for a girl, for a woman, for a victim. At this time, those same emotional roller coasters are happening, adrenaline rush, endorphin release. And then this emotional dependency happens and the woman thinks, I did something wrong, my bad. And he confirms everything to everyone. I used to be so good, so wonderful. And she is making an effort to somehow bring it all back again. And he apologizes after a certain amount of time has passed. My anger was an unexpected occurrence. I will never repeat it. If a narcissist also possesses antisocial personality disorder, indicating the presence of comorbid disorders, then he may resort to using physical violence. But if we're talking straight up in narcissism, then it's just emotional abuse. These are various manipulations, gaslighting, ghosting. There are various terms that are psychological and misleading. He twists the information, meaning he does everything to lower the victim's self-esteem, so she eventually stops believing in herself. He says, let's have a baby. They're getting a joint mortgage, meaning he's doing everything to tie her down and make it difficult for her to leave. She's quitting her job, which means she's becoming financially dependent. Some people even start mixing drinks. Some even add some substances. How dangerous is a person here anyway? After a while, she just can't do anything at all, and she doesn't understand what's going on. And if by some miraculous means she somehow obtained the information about what it is, she begins to search for similar stories, then she has an opportunity to merely sever this connection. This is going to be really, really tough, but doable. You said a very important thing, and unfortunately, our interviews are in high demand, and you know there are thousands of comments under them. Before I watched this interview, I didn't even realize that these are unhealthy relationships, that I live with an abuser, that I live with a narcissist, because he paints a picture for you, that he's trying, he's doing great, and you ruined everything. And I won't leave you hanging. I'm fully committed to you. Exactly what you said, heroines are losing jobs. No money for pocket expenses to go to the doctor, have to go through him. Can't buy herself a bus ticket, 
to go back to her mom or somewhere else. And here girls, they think that it was just a natural course of life. And then they watch interviews or listen to us now. And they're like, yeah, these are signs that he just wants to keep me tied to him for life with this grip. Now, that's a tough one, too. Please, we're discussing a hypothetical victim, right? Let's refer to it as such. How can a victim realize, besides being able to relate, to see such a story? And can the second participant, a narcissist, understand their narcissism? I'll start with the second part. Narcissus realizes that something is wrong with him. He might not know the exact diagnosis or names, but he understands what he's doing. He carries out all of these actions in order to place his internal projection within this particular individual. If he doesn't do this, he might have dissociation, which means a split personality. He'll start going crazy, going into a psychotic state. So he's basically saving himself, right? So it turns out it saves, yeah. He knows he's causing pain to someone, but he doesn't give a damn. This is the way we eat, like chicken. We do not feel sorry for it. And here he also observes a woman as his psychological nourishment. So from what you're saying, it seems this is a hopeless situation. In other words, you, the victim, can go to a psychologist and work on your self-esteem, your boundaries, and your relationships. But if the other person stays the same, a healthy union is impossible. No way. You girls just feel it. This is really scary, actually dangerous, because these emotional swings and relationships with a narcissist lead women to very scary diagnoses. It all starts with loss of sleep, weight loss or gain, panic attacks, maybe some allergic reactions. Then comes the sugar diabetes, autoimmune diseases, some cysts, then cancer and everything else, and eventually death. Either narcissus is throwing, and a narcissist always has extra resources. So he starts making other connections in order to cover himself so as not to be left without resources. So basically, he always has women on the side, maybe even other families on the side. Kids are also a resource for him, meaning they're essentially not needed by him. There are girls right now. These are not my emotional outbursts. This is a certified specialist with a higher education telling you to run away and never come back from a narcissist. Even if you have seven children with him, there is no positive outcome in these relationships. It always leads to physical death. Well, in the past, one could say that a moral death could occur. Right now, if someone suddenly happened to be in such a situation right now among our viewers, cut it out. If you've realized it, we're brainstorming ways to retreat. Safe for you, for the kids, to physically, emotionally, and financially prepared to leave. That's how it is. And it's harsh, as I said initially, not even. I expected it to be like this. It's still important to understand that there is a way out. The woman is not to blame. She was forcibly drawn into drug addiction, you could say. Staying there is really unsafe. Realize, understand that it's not your fault. Let's brainstorm a plan. And it is extremely important when you depart to completely cut off all contact with him. It's going to hurt like a bitch. There's going to be withdrawal. It takes about a year, but there is a way out. So in a year, the woman will flourish. Are you currently with your ex-husband? Do you not communicate? I don't talk to people. I got lucky that he quickly found a replacement and just left me behind. He had another child right away. So your child was not in touch with him either, right? He doesn't need a kid. In this case, you got lucky because he hardly ever contacts her. Here's how we perceive everything from our own bell tower, because what is luck? What is God saved? Well, everyone calls it differently. And there are cases like the ones you're talking about where they absolutely believe every word you say when a man doesn't need a woman or a child, and it's a blessing. And you can experience a fulfilling and independent life while the child can benefit from additional mentors, other examples and role models of other admirable and genuine men, similar to what has occurred in your life at present, within harmonious and beautiful relationships. You have a period, about a year and a half, that you're talking about, during which, regardless of disguise, the narcissist will reveal himself. Can we conclude that if you've known a man for less than a year and a half? That's right, it's not about going on a date once a week, but rather about having a close connection, maybe even living together without an official marriage, and especially not getting pregnant in the first year and a half. So like totally? Because a narcissist can't stand on tiptoes for long. Whether you like it or not, it will give you away. So you just got to watch. And daffodils, they really love to rush. They really love to be fast. 
By the way, you can say this is one of the signs when after one week, they're already proposing to cohabit, get a mortgage, have a child. Here's my mom. Here are friends. Let's do it. This is simply another wake-up call. Excessive care, gifts, flowers, that is also an indication or warning. You have to be very careful here and not rush. However, in a year and a half, everything will become clear. And now we are going to have a truly profound and highly efficient practice together. This is in order to eliminate these relationships, to sever this commotion that exists between a man and a woman, with a narcissist and the woman he victimized. Can she still hold on, even if the relationship is over? Physically, she can leave, but still keep feeding him nationally. She will be giving him all her attention, energy, and thoughts about him that are impossible to forget, even if he dumped her or she finally decided to leave. Due to this, it's impossible to form new relationships as all thoughts remain. So, following a brief warm-up, you will be confronted with the technique to ultimately put an end to your unhealthy relationships with any person, regardless of who they might be. I truly value your presence despite the fact that the discussion was extremely intricate and possibly it caused some of our spectators to feel a little uncomfortable. But as a doctor, it was important to do this, to uncover these issues, tasks, to draw attention to it. It's really important. Take a comfortable seat on the chair, put your feet up on the support, rest your hands comfortably, close your eyes, take a deep breath and slowly exhale through your mouth ensuring a relaxed state. Take a deep breath through your nose and exhale slowly through your mouth as if you're blowing out a candle. Take a total of three to four deep breaths, inhaling and exhaling slowly. Focus your attention on the sensations in your body noticing any areas of tension or relaxation. Experience the sensation of sitting comfortably with your back fully supported and your feet resting firmly on the floor, ensuring optimal comfort and posture. Experience the soothing relaxation of your body, hands, legs and stomach as you feel the tension melting away and a sense of calm washing over you. Imagine yourself in a situation where you are positioned just a couple of meters in front of a person you wish to sever ties with. Take a thorough look at them, paying attention to every detail. Visualize the distance between you and this individual and feel the emotions that arise as you contemplate ending this connection. Is he standing or sitting? What is he wearing? How does his hairstyle look like? Now envision that there is a connection between the two of you. This connection can take the form of a cord. Perhaps it is a tube. Perhaps it is a pipe. Now feel where it's connected in your body. It could be the throat, it could be the chest, it could be the stomach. Now recall all the things you obtained in this relationship from this particular individual. Perhaps it is a disappointment, a mood dampener, a genuine burden. Sadness, helplessness, pain, resentment, anguish, sorrow, despair, frustration, grief. Visualize all of these emotions within your physical being as a dense, shadowy mass. Experience and become aware of how you accumulate these undesirable feelings and sensations throughout your entire body, affecting you on multiple levels. You are accumulating in your lower limbs, in your hands, in your cranium. And through this connection, through this conduit, provide this individual with the entirety of what originated from him. None of this is yours. Just imagine how this dark blob comes out of you, goes through the connection and disappears into it. Experience the sensation of gradually becoming lighter with each exhale of your breath. Then recollect everything you provided in this relationship to this particular individual. Perhaps it is your time, your love, your care, your hopes, your dreams, all the things that make you who you are, that define your essence and shape your destiny. Now let's imagine this energy as a shimmering golden light and consciously take hold of this powerful energy, drawing it from him through the strong connection that exists between us. With each breath, envision how this energy departs from him and permeates into you, filling you completely. With each and every breath, you are feeling lighter, you are growing stronger, and your resilience is increasing. 
And when you feel the power, visualize yourself gripping a supremely sharp knife or scissors, or it could even be an ax, any kind of tool that possesses the ability to swiftly and effortlessly sever this connection in a mere second, as if it were a hot knife slicing through butter. Divide the object into three equal parts. One of the parts will be used. Consider this, two, three. Now try to imagine that the severed end you are attaching to yourself is coming from your own side, and the man who was once there slowly dissolves from your space, gradually fading away until he is no longer present in your immediate vicinity. And you raise your voice, shouting after him, I am letting you go and completely forgetting about you. Take a deep breath and then slowly exhale. Open your eyes. If you suddenly start feeling unbearably bad, and you have the desire to return to your abuser, the individual who has been inflicting harm upon you. You are aware what is awaiting you in that place is pain, disappointment, but there is no source of strength available for you. Make sure to utilize this technique whenever you find yourself in need of assistance or support. This will provide you with strength, confidence, and you will be able to handle any situation.